Hi everyone, my name is Julie and today we're discovering a new continent, South America, in particular the Andes Mountains. Have you ever asked yourself, where does the Andes name come from? Who were these people who used to inhabit, or maybe still inhabit, this beautiful land? Alin Punchai, and welcome to the Quechua language. Some may believe that Native American languages, as well as Native American people, remain in small quantities and are largely forgotten. Whoever thinks that cannot be further from the truth, so let's break these stereotypes with Quechua. It is spoken by millions of people. I found numbers ranging from 7 to 15 millions. Whichever it is, it's a lot. It has an official language status in Peru, Bolivia and Ecuador and is spoken in northern Chile, northern Argentina and southern Colombia. Now, this is a pretty large territory and to understand how this language spread over such a big chunk of land we need to look at the history. The Quechua is famous under the trademark of the language of the Incas. Incas used to have a mighty empire, the biggest in all of the Americas, which existed and flourished between 13th and 16th century AD before it was conquered by the Spanish. The Incas spread the Quechua all over the empire, as it was their official language. The original mythical Incas are said to have come down from the mountains to conquer the people who lived in Quechua, which actually designates a geographical zone around 25-3500 meters high. Yes, this is where the name Quechua actually derives from, and it was first used by a Catholic priest, Domingo de Santo Tomás, in 1560. The Quechua themselves called their language Runasimi, which means people's language. On the family tree of the Native American languages, everything is not that simple. There are so many languages, but most of them are under-researched. Furthermore, all of these languages are so distinct that it becomes difficult to group them in any language family. The Quechua itself is often classified as a separate language family or together with the Amara and other smaller languages into the Andean family that is a part of the Samoamarind branch of the larger Amerindian language tree which groups together all of the Native American languages except for the Eskimo Elliot and Nadini languages. But be careful, this is just a hypothesis, it is not proved yet, and for now all of these languages are considered as unrelated. As to Quechua, instead of calling it a language, most researchers call it a dialect continuum, meaning it consists of different dialects where the neighboring groups can pretty much understand each other, while the speakers of let's say Quechua 1 and Quechua 2b might have problems with communication. The most widespread, with 70% of the speakers, is the Quechua Tusi, spoken in Cusco, ancient capital of Inca Empire, southern Peru and Bolivia. Interestingly enough, the Spanish conquest actually helped to spread Quechua even more, for example to this region in Argentina. It happened because Christian missionaries used Quechua to convert people more efficiently. However, later on the use of Quechua went out of favor and the situation persists even still today with this mentality which goes like if you know Spanish, why would you speak Quechua? If you speak Quechua, it means that you don't know how to speak Spanish which means that you didn't go to school which means that you're poor but well, things are changing with the governments of different countries trying to put efforts to revive the Quechua language by putting it in schools, for example, or with writers or poets promoting Quechua language and writing in Quechua, as for instance Pablo Landeo, who in 2016 published the first novel written entirely in Quechua and refused to translate it in Spanish. And most importantly, a Quechua revival can happen thanks to the new generation who are proud of their language and who don't want to lose this heritage. The Quechua uses the Latin-based alphabet brought by the Spanish. The orthography norm that is widely accepted today was created by Rodolfo Soron Palomino in 1994. There are 28 letters 
and notice there are only three vowels. The most difficult in pronunciation could be the occlusive consonants, which come in three versions. The plain pa, ta, cha, ka, ha, aspirated, for example, ta or ka, and ejective, for example, a or ka. For the rest, the pronunciation is rather straightforward for someone whose native language is Spanish, for example. Quechua is also a very melodic language, as consonant clusters are not allowed. After all that has been just said, let's listen to the Quechua language. <laughs> A girl singing rap in Quechua? Not bad, huh? All the links will be in the description. And moving on to the grammar section. Take a little time to admire the beauty of Gabi. The grammar of Quechua possesses so many interesting features that I don't know where to begin. First of all, it's an SOV language and the most important thing it's an agglutinative language, meaning that in order to give more information about something, instead of putting more words, Quechua puts more suffixes. So here is a good example. Wasi means house. We add a suffix to get wasicha, little house. Then wasichaiki, your little house. Wasichaiki chik, your in plural, little house. Wasichaiki chik kuna, your little houses. Wasichaiki chik kuna puni, definitely your little houses. Wasichaiki chik kuna punis, definitely your little houses, they say. If we continue playing around, we can get even these kind of things. And for the nouns, the right suffix depends on the role of the word in the sentence, which means there are cases, 19 cases to be precise. The Quechua also has two we pronouns, the one that includes the listener and the other that excludes them. The inclusive we is also the name of the first ever TV news program on Quechua launched in 2016. Concerning the vocabulary, in the pre-colonial times Quechua was mostly influenced by the surrounding languages, especially the Aymara. In fact, both languages had so much interaction that researchers now don't know. Either these languages are actually from the same language family, or they have so much similarities because of the long contact. After the Spanish conquest, the main influence on in Quechua became, of course, the Spanish language. It is said that around 30% of Quechua words are of Spanish origin. But there has also been an exchange from Quechua to the Spanish and on to other European languages. The words like llama, condor, poncho and coca came to us from the Quechua. And also a lot of toponyms, as for example the Andes that I mentioned in the beginning, which comes from the word anti, which means east, as in Antisuyu, the east region, which was one of the four regions of the Inca Empire. So many interesting features, such a cool, old and important language. So I really hope that Quechua native speakers will manage to conserve and to promote it. And by the way, if some Quechua native speakers are actually listening to this video, please write down in the comments what is the situation with Quechua in your country. And everybody else, if you enjoyed this video, a peace Pachamama. Please hit the like and subscribe button, don't forget to comment, and please support this channel on Patreon. This video was chosen by the patrons, here are the names of these beautiful people, and if you subscribe, you could choose the next video. So thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time, bye bye!